Welcome back to my video series on what it's like to learn the Woov box. Uh, new advance in the studio today. Uh, I see that cardboard box thing. I've uh, started recording later than usual. There's traffic now. I have 100 square feet of single pane glass between me and the highway. So I built a baffling box. Hopefully the car noise won't be so much while I try to record the rest of the video. So I keep thinking that this video series is just about over, that I've covered just about everything that I'm going to be using uh, in this device. But no, every time I try to do something new, I find out that there are more features in there that can do that thing for me and I have to go learn. Um, and then days like today, there's a brand new feature that got launched into the firmware this morning. And I actually used that in putting together the stuff that we'll be hearing here, but I'm not going to be talking very much about that. But let's dig into today's topic, paraphonic oscillators. So to understand what paraphonic oscillators are, it helps to look a little bit at the device itself and what it is we have here. It's a, it's a single powerful DSP chip capable of creating one four voice polyphonic track. So one, the chord track is capable of creating true chords, and then 15 mono tracks. E each of those tracks is only capable of sounding a single note at a time. This is really mind blowing in a device of this size, but what do I do if I want chords, multiple voices on other tracks? That's where the paraphonic oscillators come in. So there are a couple of prerequisites, uh, things you have to have set up before you can use paraphonic chords. First thing you need to do is have a chord track. I have one here that uh, sounds chords pretty uh, infrequently. And these chords came from the intelligent randomization feature that was just launched this morning. I didn't choose these chords. Um, I'll talk more about that tomorrow. So the other thing you need to do is in the track that you're going to be working on, I'm going to be working on the bass track. I'm going to go into the global menu. Make sure that your algorithm is set to subtractive or to FM2. I don't know an awful lot about these different uh, synthesis mechanisms yet, but the documentation says that these are the two that work best with paraphonic voices. And you need to make sure you have chord following on. I have it set to CLSA, the closest note to the one that's sequenced. So the sequencer just contains a bunch of random notes and then follow chord will make sure that it, that it syncs to the chord that's being played. So let's dig into what the sound is that we're listening to. Right now I have oscillator one playing a triangle wave at full level. I have oscillator two down at zero playing a square wave. So let's go ahead and fade that up. And the first thing to, to know is the relationship between these two is really important in FM synthesis. So I have oscillator two set to be down one octave I have, or oscillator one set to be down one octave, oscillator two also set to be down one octave. And listen to what happens when I put it up to zero, which has oscillator two is now an octave above oscillator one. You can hear two notes playing there, one with a, with a triangle wave and one with a square wave. Now I'm going to put oscillator two back down to the same octave as oscillator one, and I'm going to tune this one up uh, five half steps. So tuning it up five half steps is a musical fourth. So now you can hear two notes, one of them up by a musical fourth. And that's sort of the, the framework for what we're, what we're going to see here, is the fact that you can tune these two oscillators separately and get two notes from them. Let's turn oscillator 2 down again, so we're just hearing oscillator 1. And let's listen to what these waveforms are. So first of all, I have triangle 1. You can hear it's just a single triangle wave, a single note. We also have triangle two. Triangle two with just one oscillator plays up an octave with a, with a second triangle wave. If we put it to triangle seven, it's up seven half steps. So there are two notes, the bass note and up seven half steps, which is a musical fifth. And now comes, I'm gonna skip past P1 for a second because we won't be able to hear it. So P2, 
When you're playing P2, it's similar to the other triangle forms, but the notes that it's playing are coming from the chord that's playing on the chord track. P2 plays the third and the fifth, so you can hear those two together here. No root, just the third and the fifth. And I skipped over P1 because we can't hear it, but I'm actually going to leave this here now. Uh, P1, paraphonic 1, plays either the root of the chord, or if there are four notes in the chord for some of the more complicated chords, um, it will play the root and the third. So now I'll leave this one on P1, go into oscillator 2, turn that one up, Let's remind ourselves where it is. Okay, so this is detune zero, oscillator one is detune negative one. So it's up an octave. I'm gonna put two down to the same, the same key as one. And it's a square wave. But, you can go to square P2 is where I'll leave it. So now we've got oscillator one playing the root of the chord, oscillator two playing the third and the fifth, oscillator one is using a triangle wave, oscillator two is using a square wave. So there are all of the, all four uh, oscillator types have this ability. Um, you have the, you have two, seven, P1 and P2 for your sine waves, your triangle waves, your square waves, and what's the fourth one? Pulse waves. Is that right? I don't know. Uh, anyhow, that's, that's the basics of how, how you do this. Um, it gives you a lot of flexibility, and bear in mind that this is just changing your oscillator. This isn't actually adding voices. So you can do this to any track to fill it out, to give you chords. Um, and you can vary the strengths of the different oscillators uh, per, uh, per track. You can have your two oscillators at different strengths. You can add filters. You can add envelopes. You, put a, you can put a, an amp envelope onto the, the two oscillators separately. We have attack one, attack two. That's oscillator one and oscillator two. You can have different envelopes for the amplitude on each of the oscillators and with your filters there's a separate filter envelope so with all of these features together it's basically limitless you can you can make so many types of sounds with this and hopefully now after after this video you understand a little bit about what paraphonic voices are and how you can get more sound into your mono tracks to use in your stuff and tomorrow I'll be back to talk about the brand new randomization features that were the, the core of what we're hearing today. I didn't program any of these notes by hand. They all came from the new intelligent randomization features, and I can't wait to dig in today and tell you about them tomorrow. All right, thanks for tuning in. Have a good day.